In this video, I'll show you how to edit your Sony ZV-1 footage, including 4K video on any computer, even an old one. Plus, I've got some editing tips that's gonna take your videos to a whole new level. My name is Vic Barry and for techniques, tips and thoughts on all things video, please hit subscribe. First step in editing the footage from the Sony ZV-1 is getting the footage off of the Sony ZV-1 and that's going to be where you're going to get your SD card and dump it into the computer. That is the fastest way to do it. Now, when you find your SD card on your computer, this is going to be a real head scratcher, especially if you're a first time user for the Sony ZV-1 because it's like, where's the footage gone? It's gone. I, there's like 10 million folders. Why Sony? The video footage is always going to be in private M4 root clip. If you're looking for photos, they're just handily and conveniently in the DCIM folder. Now don't just dump the footage anywhere. Getting organized here, especially if you're making your first few videos, is going to be hugely helpful. I'd suggest for each video that you're making, have at least one dedicated folder. If you've got an old computer or even a relatively new one, unless it's like a super editing rig, then you're probably going to find problems editing 4K footage. But I've got an easy, and I mean a really easy fix for this, no matter how old your computer, but I'm going to get that in a minute. First, let's get the footage into Adobe Premiere. Now, Adobe Premiere is the editor that I use. You could be using DaVinci, you could be using Final Cut, you could be using anything else, but all of the ideas and thoughts that I'm giving you here, they all work more or less the exact same way. Yeah, the buttons might be somewhere else in Final Cut or DaVinci, but the thought process is the exact same. So let's get the footage in here. First off, we're gonna select a new project. The site and the sequence size, I suggest keeping it at 1920 by 1080 and more on why in a minute and then import your footage and organize it and accordingly in bins and basically bins are like folders for your videos. Even at a very basic level, organization is key and just create a bin for your video clips and a bin for audio. So you can put your video clips into the video bin and your audio files into the audio bin and then you know where you have to go for everything. Speaking of audio, I'm incredibly grateful for the fact that Epidemic Sound have sponsored this video. In case you don't know, Epidemic Sound is this gigantic audio library with music and sound effects and it's all copyright free. I've been using Epidemic Sound for years and before I joined, I was paying like 50 bucks for kind of some crappy Casio keyboard style copyright free music to download or I was grabbing some really low quality sound effects off of random internet websites. No, though, I can download music from whatever genre I want. Metal, pop, it's everything is there in Epidemic Sound. And the thing is, they update their content every single week so there is banging new tracks all the time. And sound effects... I don't know how many sound effects they have, but there's almost an infinite library of sound effects. So I can grab whatever I want, whenever I need. I do it in a video by video basis. I don't have to worry about if any of these music or sound effects are going to get a copyright strike and that could cancel the video, wipe it out, wipe out the channel. So it's stress-free, which is awesome. I would love to see you guys get access to Epidemic Sound so you can get all the music and sound effects and basically all the benefits that I and loads of other content creators get. So I've left a link in the description. So not only will you get a free trial, you're going to get free music and free sound effects just by clicking the link and signing up. If you click on the link, you're directly supporting me and the channel so we can continue to make these videos. Now, once you've organized your bins and you've got your footage in, it's now time to decide what clips you're going to put on the timeline and make your video. The mechanics of this are really simple. Double click a clip, drag around the mouse, find the parts that you want to bring into the timeline. So press I for the start point and O on the keyboard for the out point. And that's the section that's just going to go into your timeline. Then all you got to do is drag it into the timeline. And if you want to drag the video with no audio, then you drag it via this symbol. Or if you want to drag the audio without the video, confusing, then just drag it with the audio symbol. Now, this is a really good tip for B-roll as well, by the way. At this point, you're probably going to be after running into a few problems, especially if you're shooting 4K footage with the Sony ZV-1. These problems are basically the clips don't move smoothly, your everything is kind of stuttering and it's lagging and it's really frustrating to use. Now, there is a really simple fix. And that's to make a proxy. Now, I know what you're thinking, Vic, a proxy? That sounds really complicated. I promise you, creating a proxy is not complicated. A proxy is basically a low-res version of the file, which means you can edit it, move it around, smooth as butter. Let's select a number of clips here. So I'm going to right-click on the two of these. I'm going to go down here and select proxy, then click create proxies. So we have some options here. What we want on the preset, basically, is the low-resolution proxy. Select OK. 
and then that opens up Adobe Media Encoder. Once it's done, you can close it down and jump back into Adobe Premiere. As we can see, this is without the proxy. It's a little bit kind of jumpy and laggy, but let's turn on the proxy option here with toggle proxies. And now we can see, look at that. It is as smooth as butter. And even if we bring it up to kind of full resolution as a proxy, it is absolutely smooth. In case you don't see the toggle proxies button, all you gotta do is select the plus symbol down here, find it in and then just drag it on here and select OK and then you can turn proxies on and proxies off. Let's get to editing the Sony ZV-1 footage now and I'm going to give you guys some tips that is going to really make your videos pop. The Sony ZV-1 has got an okay microphone but when it comes to kind of capturing audio that's not directly in front of the mic it can be a little bit, uh, you know, it's okay. To make this better and really make an immersive experience to your audience and viewers we're going to add in some sound effects. Sometimes you might want the original video clips audio to be there for whatever reason, but in this case, I'm going to decrease the volume simply by just dragging down this little line here. And then our sound effects are going to take kind of pride of place. And you can see it makes a huge difference. And you can stack lots of sound effects to make an absolutely incredibly immersive soundscape. When it comes to 120p footage for that super kind of slow-mo b-roll, what you need to do is slow this down. Depending on your sequence, this could be up to 20 or 25%. And all you got to do is press Ctrl R, type in your speed. So I'm going to bring this down to 25%. And then we can see it is nice and buttery smooth slow motion. When it comes to talking head videos or when you're talking to the camera just generally if you're out and about in a vlog then you really should shoot it in 4k and that's because 4k is a lot bigger than 1080p and basically what that means is you can crop in like this without losing any quality on the video. But to really hide your cuts and make it a completely seamless edit there's two important things that you need to do. Dump dead air which looks like this on the timeline and sounds like that. You can use the effect constant power to keep the jump cuts and the sound sounding pretty buttery smooth. Now, if you wanna go up another level, then start using B-roll. But when it comes to using B-roll, make sure the B-roll is relevant. Because if I'm talking about coffee and there's B-roll over it and it's completely unrelated to coffee, then it's going to completely kill the viewer immersion and it's going to stop the story in its tracks and people are like going to go, I'm going to watch something else. However, if you're talking about making coffee and the B-roll is showing you making coffee, that's really upping your editing game and bringing it to a whole new level, which is going to help hugely with audience retention because you're talking, you've got the cuts, the crops, the B-roll, the whole thing is moving really, really well. Now here's the thing, do not, please, do not get disheartened when your first video looks like crap. I'm really embarrassed about my first videos. I've been editing a long time. I work as a creative video director and a commercial editor, so I've been doing this for ages. But everybody starts somewhere. You know, I had to start at the beginning and you're starting at the beginning and that's perfectly cool. But the one big piece of advice I would give you, right, especially if you're going to be shooting and editing, do not just pick up the camera and shoot. Please do not get your Sony ZV-1 and go, I'm going to make a video. Don't know what it's about, but I'm going to make a video. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Spend a little bit of time crafting what your video is going to be about. Have a basic beginning, middle and end. Even if it's a simple thing like going to the store, whatever it is, have it make sense. Have a little bit of a payoff. Bring the viewer, your audience on the journey. And the only way you can do that is by keep doing it. Put in the reps into editing. And I promise you, if you keep doing it, you will get 100% better. And if you want to get a little bit better with the Sony ZV-1 video there, Seven epic tips for the Sony ZV-1. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, if you found this video useful, hit the like button, hit subscribe. And please, most importantly, don't stop fighting for yourself.